What's going on everybody? C4 here. Welcome back to episode 34 of the Las Vegas Raiders franchise mode here on the channel as we're here for a big doubleheader for week three and week four, both against divisional opponents in the Chargers and the Denver Broncos. But before we jump into the video, I always, I hate to pander to you, but likes significantly impact where my videos go. So if we could hit 2,000 likes on this video, that would go above and beyond any way you could go out and support the channel. So we are coming off Maybe the worst loss I've had in this series against the 49ers here in week two. Five picks on the day for Trevor Lawrence. Thing was rough, man. It was it was a game that the gameplay felt weird. It was just, just it was a depressing performance. The game was so bad, I was like, you know what? I gotta go play some other games. And speaking of other games, before we jump into the video, I want to talk to you guys about a sponsor on the channel, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is a brand new collection RPG game that has taken the mobile gaming landscape by storm. That will take over your life like a clingy girlfriend. More than 10 million players worldwide have already downloaded the game in less than six months. What does Raid have to offer? Well, just a few of the things here. We got you can collect over 400 champions, enjoy a fully voiced story campaign, raid with friends in a clan, and claim glory in the PvP arena. And the best part about it, it is free to play. In Raid, you have the ability to personally customize your champions, choosing their artifacts and creating a unique mastery build for each one of them. There's something for everyone in this game. I personally love entering the PvP arena and handing out L's. With over 300,000 reviews, Raid has almost a perfect score in the Play Store. Raid is growing super fast and the highly anticipated Faction Wars feature is now live. And there is a new awesome rewards program for new players. You get a daily login reward for the first 90 days in game. You can find me in game under the nickname Papa C4 and if you're quick enough you can join my clan. So what are you waiting for? Go to the video description, click on the special links, and you will get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program to start your raid journey. Good luck, and we'll see you out there. So I definitely want to thank Raid, the people at Raid, for uh, reaching out for another sponsorship on the channel. Well, back into the video. That week two loss, man, it was horrific. It was all time bad. I don't know how can I see like the in-depth stats of this. Like I didn't even really want to stay on it. It was so bad, man. They dominated us on the defensive side of the ball. One touchdown to five picks, a 38.5 QBR for Trevor Lawrence. We pretty much abandoned the run. We should have stuck with the run by the looks of it. Look at that, four, I mean, 11 yards of touch for Josh Jacobs. You can't ask for much more than that. Renfro did go over 100 yards, got himself a star dev trade, a dev trade boost, which was literally the only positive we could take away from this game. But defensively, the 49ers... Five sacks, D Ford, three and a half, Nick Bosa. We got a second and a half from DeForest Buckner. Oh, my God. I mean, Quan Alexander was ridiculous. Looked like the second coming up. Pick your poison in Patrick Willis or Navarro Bowman. Like, it was just... We, we need to get that game out of our minds. And we have the Chargers this week. The Chargers are a team that we usually try and go for an ugly win because we put on conservative carry so Derwin James can't fumble. But that greatly hinders a lot of the explosive plays on our offense. So I'm going to go balls to the wall here. And we're going up against the division leading Chargers. It's early, but they, you know, they haven't lost yet. We're going to go all in. We're not going to put on some passive care. We're going to fumble. We're going to fumble. We're going to go all in. And we are going to try and uh, just, just forget. Burn the tape from that week two loss against the San Francisco 49ers. Let's just, let's just, you know, we got our, we got our new uh, draft class here. We will preview that after this game. Because I just really need to get the bad taste of that 49ers game out my mouth hole. Come on, Vernon. Bernard Hargraves, make the tackle. Ah. All right, not a great start. Not a great start, everybody. 78-yard touchdown to Keenan Allen, not a great start. All right, we got first in 10 in the red zone here on the 13-yard line. We've moved the ball very well down the field. And C.D. Lamb drops it. Ah. Oh, that's a blown play. Josh Jacobs, free reign behind the line of scrimmage, gets in. For a, yeah, his first rushing touchdown of the season. Ties this one up at seven apiece. That was great vision. And hey, kudos to the offensive line. We usually rag on them. They did a great job there. Can't give up a score here. Third and four. We got set up by a pretty decent Melvin Gordon run. Let's bring the pressure. Oh, we got Van Der Esch, our free shot at Allen Bowman. He sends that into the front row. We hold him to a field goal attempt. Great pressure from LVE. Oh, let's go. This is going to be Josh Jacobs' game. We are showing. Oh, get off him. Let's go. That was insane. I was just getting ready to say. Oh, look, there's still the downside. He's not that fast. Throws in an extra stiff arm there. 55-yard touchdown. Raiders back in the lead. Quieting this 
Let's be honest, most of the fans here are probably are Raider fans anyways. Oh, come on. Catch him. Catch him. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ, the big place. And there's the first fumble. Cool. Cool, cool. Great time to have that happen as well. That safety boy. Cleveland Furl, Mohurst getting there. Kind of momentum we need, but our offense, Trevor Lawrence in particular, not looking good. Can't even execute a fucking screen pass correctly. Jesus, Trevor Lawrence is playing bad. I hate this team right now. We were like the we're like a game away from the Super Bowl. Now we're the worst team in the league. There go. Shout out to the only guy on our team that's doing anything right now, Mr. Josh Jacobs. There we go. Getting John Ross finally involved in the offense. Finding that mismatch on that Chargers defense. And somehow, some way, we are still in this game. Great touchdown, John Ross. Don't be scared of it. Oh, one-handed pig slips! Shout out to pig slips, John Ross. Deep ball. He's done nothing to this point in the regular. He's probably been our most disappointing player on the offensive side of the ball, excluding the five picks last week from Trevor Lawrence. And there we go. Finally starting to heat up. You don't put any safety help over top. I'm going to take that matchup all damn day. All right, we got a third and goal on the seven. We're going to see if we can get some slants cheese. I mean, there's a lot of speed between both C.D. Lame and John Ross. If our offensive line holds up, we should be able to find the open man. Oh. Oh. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster, John Ross. And 96 speed, 97 speed, whatever he has. Pretty damn gangster. Third and a goal. The Chargers desperately want to get it. Well, I mean, any points at this point. I don't think they're in four down territory. They could be. Maybe, maybe not. We're putting pressure on him. Cleveland Farrell brings the pain, brings the ruckus off that edge. Gets his second sack of the game. They're definitely kicking a field goal now. Here we go. Come on, Josh. Come on, Josh. What are we at now? Almost 270? 270? We had 270 rushing yards, so shout out to Josh Jacobs breaking the Oakland, Vegas, whatever you want to call them, Raiders single game rushing yards record, which was held by a man named Napoleon Kaufman. Broken in 1997. It was 227 was the previous record. We are up to a glorious 275. We're going to try to get 300. And there you have it. A bounce back performance. Defense, eh. I mean, it felt like every time that the Chargers got anything, it was a 90-yard touchdown. Other than that, we held them in check, but still, 90-yard touchdowns are a thing. And it was an issue with our defense. Was it year one or year two? That we just constantly gave a big play after big play. And we, we, we dominate a team for like a full quarter. And then we just give up for whatever reason, like a 90-yard touchdown. But that was dominant. And obviously, the most dominant was Josh Jacobs on the day 54 percent completion percentage for trevor lawrence is not that sexy but i will take 223 touchdowns a bounce back from that five interception day but josh jacobs you get the game ball good sir new raider record holder 286 rushing yards we got two touchdowns i mean that 286 put some where who has more rushing yards than 286 ap got 296 286 by jerome harrison for the browns Back in 09, I remember that game. 295 for Jamal Lewis of the Baltimore Ravens. And we don't know what records may or may not have shifted hands over the last four years. But that is one of the all-time great running back performances. And he didn't get hurt. I, You know, you told me you had this. I was like, oh, yeah, he's done for the rest of the season. He got like five different injuries. But no, he was good. John Ross finally showing up. Four catches, 106 yards, three touchdowns on the day. Defensively, Darren Lee, we got eight tackles. Look at that. Three TFLs from Garyon Conley. Playing a little bit of nickel. Looks good. Three TFLs from O'Hurst. Two TFLs. Two sacks from Cleveland Furl. I definitely want to see some more interceptions coming from this team. Maybe we can do it against the Denver Broncos. But that is an excellent, excellent bounce back performance. Putting us to 2-1 on the season. So from that victory, we can take a look at our final draft class that is ready for right now anyways. 
here in Madden 20, the 2023 draft class, uh, which most of these guys, so these guys here are all high school recruits that are going to the NFL uh, in terms of quarterbacks. I mean, you know, you might not know a lot of these names. DJ uh, Ugalele, he was in La um, QB1. He was the, the I don't know, was, I can't remember, but he was like a starting quarterback, took over for one of the uh, one of the guys there two seasons ago. Uh, but we're you know we're good for QBs. But you can see like Hank Bachmeyer right now is tearing it up as a true freshman for Boise State. Uh, I think he might be the only true freshman right now that is starting. Could be wrong, but I think he is. Uh, when you look at the running backs, there's some very talented running backs here: Zach Evans, Demarcus Bowman, both these guys five-star type playmakers. Um, we have Frank Gore Jr. Well, I mean, we'll scout this guy just for now. The son of legendary Niner. What, what is he? he probably goes down. When all said and done, he's probably going to go down as a nine and running back, right, Frank Gore? Uh, but he's here. Uh, when you look at uh, wide receiver, what do we got here? So this is where we, you know, this is where it's awesome because you start getting into playmakers that you you might you might know the last name. You know, we have uh, Mark Anthony Richards. This is one. I'm pretty sure he is the brother of Amon Richards, former really really talented wide receiver for Miami that had to retire. We have Musin Muhammad the third, the son of. Legendary Carolina Panther wide receiver Musin Muhammad. I'm gonna guess maybe the second. Could be potentially, maybe. So uh, we got him. We got him locked up. We'll scout that guy. See what he's saying. Um, let's see here. Anyone else that I know at the top of my head? This guy here. We used him in the Bills rebuild. I don't even need a tight end, but the fact that he, I just remember he was basically an offensive tackle that played tight end. Uh, we definitely at least do a little bit of scouting there. Offensive line is huge for us. We're going to Miles Hinton and Paris Johnson. Uh, we'll go all with the first rounders because I think that's going to be the big spot that we want to look to get better at because, you know, the, the only player that's on the hot seat right now on our team, I think, is really Trent Brown. He's a high paid tackle that's not playing very well. So uh, we'll definitely will continue to uh, scout and do our due diligence on some of these tackles to see if there's going to be one that's going to be worth getting our, uh, our first round pick. One of the best names ever, Demon Clowney from LSU. First round grade. One of the better speed rushers in the nation. Uh, the big one, the big, the, probably the number one hyped up recruit is Brian Breezy. Uh, if you looked, he has like, I had a couple of viral videos on social media. He's got, he's literally gigantic. He literally looks like, I don't know how many, maybe one big one. I think I even tweeted it out. He looks insane for Clemson. Uh, definitely are going to keep an eye on that. I mean, we have Neville Galley more. We don't really need a D-tackle. And probably where I think this team's going to finish, we're not going to have a chance at even sniffing him because he's I think he's the number, he's the top five overall, I think, in true talent. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. But he's a monster. Uh, when you look at the linebackers, I mean, there's some nice talented here. Uh, Noah, Noah Sewell, he's the brother of Penai Sewell, who is maybe the best tackle or top five tackle in college football right now for Oregon. This is a great class for a linebacker. We'll say that. And that's kind of annoying because I would argue that the strength of our team right now, at least from top to bottom, there's no real weakness at the linebacker core. We just paid big money for Van Der Esch. We have John Abram. So both those guys are top of their position. And Darren Lee in the middle, he is more than good enough that I don't really consider we have to replace him. But if Flo, the USC prospect, or Suell, for example, do slip, we might have something to think about. Uh, in the secondary, we got... Elias Ricks from LSU, Ringo from Georgia, Katan Crawford from Texas, Clark Phillips the third from Ohio State, and Fred Davis from Clemson. Those are probably the big three, all from you know schools that turn out prospects. Uh, we will see when we scout this guy, Lijos Cavazos. He might be the most freakiest athletic prospect of all time. He had a, I think he ran a 4-2-0 flat, and like he has like an insane vertical. Like we will see when we scout him. He might be my number one target if there's if there's a way that we can pull that one out. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it, fellas. That is the the draft class. Like I said, there's unless you're really really into to, to you know high school recruiting and really really into college football, a lot of these days might not be overly familiar for you. So hopefully, you know, the scouting for this year um, will uh, break you down some prospects that you may want to you know kind of get to know. Get to know before they're going to be in the NFL on Sundays and start dominating. Before we get into our week four game on the road at the Mile High Stadium, we have a weekly award winner. It is Josh Jacobs with that insane performance. 288 total yards on the day. 286 rushing, new record holder. And look at who is the NFC Offensive Player of the Week. Oh, what's going on with you, Mr. Derek Carr? Is this now the time that you're going to try to creep up your head when our quarterback's struggling? So Trevor Lawrence sitting at 755, five touchdowns, five picks. Going down to Minnesota, Derek Carr, 809 touchdowns, no interceptions on the season. 
So right now, Derek Carr is tied for the best stats in the NFL. Okay? Okay, I'm glad. I am glad. Now this rivalry is heating up just a little bit. Last year, Derek Carr was garbage. Wasn't very good. Now he's picking it up. Okay, I see you, dog. I see you. Look at that contracts right away, man. We're going to get some of these hammered out as early as we can because, you know, they're guys that we want locked up long term. Roddy Hudson, the anchor of this offensive line, he's been very good, hasn't regressed. We'll come back to the table there. Maybe give him, you know, upwards of 11 5. You know, it's only a one year deal. He's 33, but the fact that he's 33 has only regressed two points since we've had him. That's insane. Cleveland Furrow, franchise player on the defensive side. We'll give him a four year, $62 million deal. And he wants more money. All oh, these guys just kind of bending me over. Oh, okay. Abram. Abram's tank. Jesus Christ. Tread Brown. He's playing for his contract right now. I don't have to worry about I mean, maybe we still could cut him if he plays bad. But I like the fact that his contract's up. We could think about it. I mean, beyond that, Josh Jacobs, 100% we're going to re re try to retain him and most likely retain him. Foster Moreau, get him locked up. Um... Renfro, for sure, get him locked up. Townsend, best punter in the league, get him locked up. Chauncey Getter Johnson. I mean, a lot of our depth guys, I do not really want to get rid of them. But looking at big guys that we can look to try to replace, definitely Gabe Jackson on the offensive line. I mean, you could definitely consider Riddick, given the production. He's a bubble guy. We don't know yet. We'll see how well he plays. Joiner, a one-year, $3 million deal. I think that's still solid for what he brings with his presence on the defensive side. But uh, definitely, right off the bat, we're going to come back next week with Abram Furl and Hudson and try to get the big fish here locked up for the foreseeable future. Oh, that's a great matchup. That's a great matchup. We, 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 we handle the blitz right in come the on, face baby. of Let's Trevor go. Lawrence. Th throws a dime. 40 yards to Moreau. Third and 10 here on the Broncos. 29-yard line. We got the drop back and pass. Need everyone to lock it up. Renfro gets open across the middle, and that is his second drop on the opening drive. Has not been impressive since he earned an upgrade in dev trait. The Raiders got to settle for a field goal attempt. Oh, come on, man. Holding, probably on Trent Brown. Gabe Jackson, another garbage player. Oh, there we go. Renfro. Why? Another drop. Got to help out the QB, fellas. All right, got third and ten. Can our offensive line, Trent Brown at the top of the screen. Hang in there long enough for us to make a completion or take off with Trevor Lawrence. A little on that open field. Run faster. You have like 80 speed. Why does it look like Tom Brady out there? Run faster, for sure. All right, third and 11 on the 15. A field goal technically would tie the game, so I'm not opposed to just getting that for points. Or just not even having a chance to look downfield because Chase Young is in on the sack. Great job, O-line, yet again. Well, let's go. 61-yarder. Let's get some field goals to end this. Hope you love field goals. Oh, that's perfect. It's up. And it's good. 12-12 ball game at halftime. Lots of sexy field goals. Yeah, there's another safety. Cool. It's Trent Brown. Fuck it or horrible. See what life's like without Trent Brown. So we can cut his gigantic, giant, Jack the Beanstalk looking ass. Okay, here's what we would do. The move would be Snyder would start at guard. And we'd take John Runyon. Following the likes of his father. And he would go to be our brand new right tackle. Hypothetically, if I decide to leave Trent Brown right here in Denver, Colorado. Yeah, there's another drop. Awesome. I think that's our fifth drop today. And there's our seventh drop of the day. All right, we got third and two. We're going to keep it on the ground so far. John Runyon at tackle has shut down Von Miller. Von Miller was into an X Factor. And then he went, ah, ah. That's awesome. That's exactly what we need. Team Let's offensive go. line go. playing go. much better without Trent Brown. And we're out here with a first and goal. Dare we drop back and pass it. We're going to try it at least once. Touchdown would be huge. Full kudos to our defense. Oh, no. He throws it behind, but still CG Dam able to adjust. And somehow we have the lead. 
I don't know how, but somehow we do. And we're going to go for two here. Simple two-point play. You just want give me enough time for John Ross to outrun all these slow scrubs on the Denver Bronco defense. And life will be good. Ah, just bat it down. Whatever. Still a one-point lead. Got to hit that. You've got to hit that. Here we go. Josh Jacobs out the backfield. Take advantage of the aggressiveness of Vaughn Miller. Put it up to the two-yard line. C4 special attempt. Don't really like running it with Josh Jacobs because he's not very fast. Looks like a fullback out there. And there's your TFL. All right, third and goal on the seven. Renfro's been our best receiver on the day. We'll see if we can take advantage of him in the slot. He does get open. That wasn't a, ooh, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of time. Still Vaughn Miller. Still have to give up a sack. We'll kick the field goal. Go back in the lead. Okay, this is big. They got a field goal here. Kind of long. Kicking into the wind. Oh, that is just way too short. Let's kill this clock Let's off go, and somehow Let's steal go. a victory from Mile High Stadium. Oh, there you go. Too easy. Game over. Game over. Okay, we got to kick a field goal here. It's fine. Whatever. Just don't block it. It's up. There's going to be about seven, eight seconds left. I think we can see this one out. That shit out of Madden, man. What the fuck? I don't know. I don't know what just happened. I do not know what just happened before I throw this controller. This brand new expensive Xbox controller. <laughs> oh! Cross this goddamn room. I gotta end it here. I gotta end it here. People, thanks for watching. Subscribe, smash that like button. We'll be back in a couple days. Jesus fucking Christ. Money I'm spending, I'm out and I'm shopping. You talking that shit when you talking and talking. Look at my options, look at me dropping. Asking the game, like, who are you stopping? Not me, not me, not never. Not me, not me, not never. Not me, not me, not never. I'm way too close.